the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Head Crack After Hours and the Ricky Smiley Morning Show is a group who is like a uh, like any good relationship. They'll, they'll be together, they'll break up, they'll get back together, and hopefully they stay together for a long time. Pretty Ricky is in the building! Yeah. What up, what up, what up? And for anybody who maybe went to jail like sometime around 2003, have no idea what's what, who's who, let's start from left to right. What's everybody's names? I go by the name of Pleasure P. This your boy is spectacular. This your boy Baby Blue. Whoa. Slick him. Word up. Pretty Ricky is in full effect right now. You guys are getting ready to embark on the Millennial Tour. Or yeah. is it the Millennium? Millennium. Millennium. The Millennium, Tour. The millennial yeah. Tour, man. April 18th. Well, it starts off March. It goes all the way through April 28th. And a lot of people are excited. When they heard that Pretty Ricky was getting on, it seemed like, you know, the fever pitch went to a certain level. Mm. You guys are like a like a guilty pleasure for a lot of ladies out there. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, listen. I I guarantee everybody coming out is going. They're gonna enjoy themselves because pretty Ricky. We come with the come with the good energy. We come with a great show. So we definitely gonna give them their money's worth. So, ladies, can't wait. <laughs> now to come alive and be pretty Ricky in 2019, because yeah. you know a lot is a lot has changed. There's been some like you know switching of the furniture a little bit. I know Pre- Pleasure P was out the group for a minute. Uh, there was like a tall Jamaican at one point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like y'all group is undergoing a lot of changes. <laughs> he was I mean, Jamaican, this, right? This the original group right here, though. So uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> we all back. We here. Where's the tall Jamaican at, though? What y'all do with him? <laughs> Boy, <Booyah. laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking about? I don't know. No, for a second, oh, for a second, about, I think bro. when Pleasure P left the group. There was a they, y- y'all had somebody filling in. There, there was a guy that y'all that, that y'all introduced. He's like, yo, this is the new member of the group. Okay, man. yeah, you know? that, was, that was for a little minute, you know. But right now, man, it's pretty riggy, man. The Millennium Tour. Okay, I just make sure right I wasn't now. high and dreamt that. Because you <laughs> might, you oh, might have, because the the tall Jamaican. I'm still trying to figure that out. Maybe he was Haitian. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it was a, it was a blurry time. <laughs> I got it's all good. But to see y'all back together is dope because, like, you know, as as, as black people, we gonna fight. We, we yeah. gonna figure it out, yeah. and right. we gonna get back to the bag when we need to, man. Absolutely. Who, who reached out to who first and said, "Hey, man, listen, man, you know we, we got to do this, man. The fans want to see us." I think it kind of organically happened. I, I don't who did anybody reach out? I think it, I don't know. Well, That's we kind of we kind of kept communication, and then it it grew into it. Like it, it or whatever bad blood that we thought was there. We like, man, hold up, man. This this ain't how how what's really happening, man. We ain't even mad at each other, man. Hold up, man. Let's. Let's go. Let's go to lunch. <laughs> okay. It, it kind of happened like that. You know what I'm saying? And we just put it together. I think. Play, I think. I think. Oh, uh, when we hung out, you played us. Um, you played us them records. You played what that mouth do. Um, and that record was fire. And then he pleasure was like, man, we should cut this record. And then we we all sat down, and it kind of went from there. Then we went in the studio, recorded puddles, and then um, we recorded another record. I can't remember, but anyway, it was a dope process, man. End up in the studio with Rico Love, Big D. We did some some banging records with them. And the dope thing is, like you know, like not only as a group but also solo wise, y'all guys have like you know built up an impressive catalog of, of joints. So like when you when the Millennial Tour kicks off, do you get to see? The best of all those worlds. You get the Pretty Ricky record. You get the Pleasure Peace solo joints. Man, they just got to come to the show they and see, They just got to come see. We ain't giving away come. nothing. No okay. secrets. You Surprises know what I'm saying? Just on gotta come <laughs> Surprises. It's going to be a, a dope show. That's all we know. And God. real talk, y'all can go to gsquaredevents.com and buy tickets right now. If you don't have tickets, if you're following any other Pretty Ricky pages, look for the tours, and you're going to see the, the link to buy the tickets. It's gsquaredevents.com. And real talk, all the cities are selling out. So you might want to go and grab them right now if you ain't got them. You guys are having good problems. Like yeah, real good problems. Yeah, great. yeah. We <laughs> started sure. out here two two nights in a row. Okay. And yeah. the lineup consists of who? Like who was on, on the tour? So there's B2K, okay. Pretty Ricky, Bobby Valentino, Lloyd, Mario, and oh Chingy and the Yin Yang twins. Mm-hmm. Yo, like you know, and like with a tour like this, because of the the caliber of artists you got, you got Chicks that are gonna get pregnant that night, and chicks that are gonna bring the kids that they had when they were listening to y'all music when y'all started out. Facts. Right, it's kind of cool. Right, <laughs> like is it ill to see your fans grow up right before your eyes, though? I think it's gonna be dope because we're gonna see our 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 immediate fan base, and they're gonna bring their kids to put them up on game. Like you don't know nothing about this. Well, no, hold on. Now they're already on game. 
a lot of the a lot of the parents are listening to the music with their daughters because I because I'm starting to meet them. And it's like, yeah, okay, she's like 40 and a kid is like 20. Right. It's gonna be dope. But it, it's the game though. That's like, like you know amazing, like, right? Y'all remember you came and sang in my school? And like, <laughs> right, and right. Yeah. Like 32 and driving. It's weird. Like you know, right. time go by so fast. So people don't realize that being in the business, it is a job, and being a group. Being in a group is a job as well. Absolutely. So when someone quits a group, how does this work? Do you, you know, like, do you turn in your two weeks notice and be like, yo, I'm going to do three shows or I'm going to do one more session and I'm done after Actually, that? Actually, it did go like that. I right. finished out some shows and that was it. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. And we, talk, we talked about That's that. Funny. Yeah, we spoke about it. Like, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was a lot. Yeah, on Love & Hip Hop, we talked about it. We on Love & Hip Hop Miami. And um, we talked about how. And when does that air again? Love and Hip Hop Miami air every every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Eastern. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. But we Got talked it. about how you know when Pleasure wanted to leave, we sat down. He was like, "Man, I think he ain't even want to leave the group at first. He just wanted to leave the house that we was all living in, you know, and, and get his own money. And it kind of just turned into that. It just got chaotic. But um, yeah, man, you could tune in to Love and Hip Hop. You'll see our whole story. We we played it out on TV. And y'all a perfect fit for love and hip hop because the crazy thing is like when y'all came out it was like at the dawn of social media. Right. You right. know, Twitter was just kind of coming out. Right. YouTube was starting to blow a little bit more, and I think that helped fan the flames because like your fans got to see y'all. Mm -hmm. They got to, you know see the moves and everybody mm -hmm. that's making the music and yeah. spectacular. You were on social media in the beginning like doing the most. I remember that time you like challenged Chris Brown to like a dance battle. Right. Right. And but the crazy thing is like people like it was like yo you crazy for that. But now like this that same thing that going people viral like, all day is celebrated now. Yeah. Like the crazier the better. Yeah. Hey, man, it's all about marketing, man. When you get the strategies behind, you just can't make sure it can't go, you know, left field, like just making up stuff, you know. That man, if you, if you go online and you work. look at um, hashtag grind on me challenge, yeah. you're going to see all, you're gonna see that all day. But you know what's great about Pretty Ricky is that we're just a viral group. Like, a lot of things is happening, like the Apple Store challenge and the grind on me challenge, like all these different things that's going viral is like adding the Pretty Ricky element to it and it's helping out the situation right and and i think that's amazing just to have that type of influence on the culture with the music and and it's about making that classic music people still tell me to this day oh man blue star or late night special album like it's just you know it's classical music so it'd be expecting that on a tour you know the don't think i think pretty about pretty ricky as a group is y'all not so overexposed to where people get sick of it you know what I'm saying? Like, ah, not them again. Like, you know, you come out, you stick and move, fall back a little bit, mm -hmm. and, and, and then hit them with something else. So it gives people time to miss y'all. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, man. I think they missing the whole era. Yeah. Real I talk. think it's more than just us. Yeah, it's bigger than us. Yeah. Now, Slickum, you're like the, the, the quietest one in the group, and it seems like it's always been that way. So, like, you know, when it's, like, downtime, like, you know, <laughs> when Pretty Ricky wasn't out there, how did you all stay busy? We'll start with you. I don't know. I can't even answer it. I'm, my mind is blank right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, but my mind is blank right now. It's all good. Like, yeah. Blue, like Blue, what would you do to, to keep busy? Um, To keep busy, at, at first I got into club promotion, mm -hmm. and I did that on the regular for a couple of years, and it, it, I brought in a lot of money every week. I, in Miami, I had, like, a lot of the biggest nights at the strip clubs. And um, it, in Miami, majority of our culture, we go to strip clubs and we eat. Absolutely. So I did that for a while, and then I got into e-commerce, and, um, you know, I, I got this huge e-commerce business that, you know, made a few million, and, um, you know, it just transitioned into into influencer marketing and stuff like that, you know? Then I'm past the ball to spec. That's smart, though. Yeah, I mean, I kind of did, like, the same thing and just transitioning from the whole Twitter and Facebook movement and really capitalizing off of that and created a cat called Grumpy Cat and built that up to... It's, is, why your mouth open? It's very because funny. I was just reading a story about that the other day, and I didn't put yeah. two to two together. Like that was you that, like yeah. you know, like made the the grumpy cat memes. Yeah, yeah. So when they said it was spectacular, it did it. I was like, oh, same name as the guy from Pretty Ricky. That's interesting. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started with that, and then like transitioned to like helping celebrities because I realized it was a huge problem in the music industry like they had you know celebrities had all this massive following they didn't know how to monetize it and then it pretty much birthed my company called Adwazar where now I pretty much help 
personality brands and aspiring talent really go viral on social media and like building up their followings and monetizing it, increasing their network. Yeah. That is dope as hell, man. Like y'all really like Yeah. It, and the dope thing about something like Grumpy Cat, whether you black, white, yeah. or whatever, you were exposed to it right, in right. some way, size, shape, or form. And the crazy thing is like, you know, when you can get people to support you without knowing they're supporting you. Right. You know, same thing with, you know, cryptocurrency, yeah. e-commerce, and all that other stuff, and yeah. like having side brands too. Yeah, I think, and, and then at that time, I didn't really want nobody to know it was me, because, you know, as as black people, sometimes we don't support each other when they know, like, oh, that's his, oh, I ain't gonna mess with that, because it's just like, sometimes that happens, right? Mm. So I just try to stay away from putting my name on certain things back then, but now it's changed. Like, everybody is banding together, and everybody is understanding we're stronger together. Together. So now you're seeing me more out, you know, campaigning and like even me having a situation where I realized that, you know, school systems are failing a lot of a lot of kids. So now I created a program to solve that issue and and teach them things that they should know about you know, running a business, leadership, credit, you know, how to pay your taxes, how to save on taxes, you know, legally and all this yeah. great stuff that you can learn as someone trying to make money in business and teach them how to start a business. So I have, I launched the online academy called Awazar Academy. Um, and, you know, now they can join my entrepreneur MBA program. That's super dope. You yeah. know, the crazy thing about music and urban culture sometimes, like sometimes your brand is only as hot as the group is. Yeah. So sometimes if you name your clothing line after like Yeah, for sure. You know, the artist, like I got a pair of vocal jeans that I found in the back of my closet that I am scared to wear because Oh, wear it to the millennial <laughs> tour. Yeah. yeah, millennial tour. Where, you got space for them things on the millennial tour. The millennial tour, they pulling out everything. Jersey dresses, apple bottom jeans, the light up belts. Anything that's nostalgic from our era, man, that's what they're wearing to the tour. And it's going to be fun, and it's going to be dope. going to be fun. GSquaredEvents.com if you want tickets. Yes, sir. Oh, man, we're going to flash at the bottom of the video, too. Now, Pleasure P, what did you do to keep busy when, you know, things got a little quiet for a second? You went platinum. What? I mean, I've been Number out. One, I've been what? touring. Like, I've been working. And that's your opportunity to start. That's why I threw it out. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I never stopped working, man. You know what I'm saying? I've been touring and just doing my thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Stay in the studio. I like the right music and stuff like that. So I've just been doing that. He's Yo, such a modest guy, man. He got number one records, man. You know, I got, I like Grammy um, nominated. Yeah, Grammy nominated, man. Did you wrong? Boyfriend number two, under all, all these big records, man. See, yeah. sometimes like you gotta surprise people. You know, yeah. like sometimes you can't like you know you can't stunt openly. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you gotta be like, oh snap. You know, like and that's and that's the best me, way to get people to not turn me, on you. Me, I just be chilling. You know what I'm saying? When when you got people always watching your life and you know what I mean? Like they like I don't know, it's kinda hard to celebrate success nowadays because you just got people that just try to take things from you. So I'm just kinda I'm I'm more reserved with with everything. You know what mm. I'm saying? Now real talk cause they'll when... put out this interview in court and be like a child support <laughs> court and be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? So right. Just, yeah, no, that's true. Pleasure. Cool. You you showed me a screenshot the other day of the streams and the amount of sales and all that stuff that we had. You remember those nah, numbers? Nah, nah, I don't. That's oh. a good answer because you're about to get him audited. Yeah, nah. that's I was just, yeah, you, like, you, he you. just threw it out. Yeah, and then he said, you remember nah, those numbers? I don't oh. know nothing. Bro. Oh, well, well, anyway, hey, I man. I don't know nothing. They su I got you. Hey, they some big numbers, man. You know. So, so okay, oh. surprises. Everybody out there, if you're trying to get into the music business, if you're trying to learn um, and be educated about the music business, it, everything um, from... From royalties to publishing to, you know, just anything. Sound exchange. I got a music business school. It's called musicbusiness.school. You can go and sign up. It's a course that any parent can sign their kid up to take and, and educate them on the music business. It's called musicbusiness.school. And the Instagram page is the same thing, musicbusiness.school. Okay, cool. Man, like, the dope thing is not only are y'all running with the information, y'all empowering others. And a lot of people are sometimes afraid to do that. So that's dope. Yeah, I think that's what we need right now. I think that... It's a lot of people who have visions and and goals and they really don't know the first step to accomplishing them. And and the fact that, you know, we already accomplished certain things, it makes it easier for them to have a blueprint to really go execute on that, you know, versus just trying to figure out what's next. You know, if I can hand you a blueprint to success, all you gotta do is follow eight oh Z and you're gonna get this result at the end. So 
you know, y'all make sure y'all check it out. And, and, and anybody who do want to join my program, all you got to do is text me hashtag, you know, to this number 786-661-1224. And all you got to do is text me hashtag course and um and you can get a link to my live webinar. And throw that number out one more time. People 786 661 one two two four. Text me hashtag course, and it'll send you a, a link to my live training, free live training at that. Got you. Free now, game. Um, people they say you know sometimes you only as strong as the team you got behind you. I know there's been a lot of management changes. At first, at one point, your dad was managing the mm-hmm. group, right? Mm-hmm. And I had you had to sue him. Uh, is there still like stress and you know intention there over that we situation? We didn't sue him. We didn't sue him. Okay. So everything's cool though. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a work in progress, man. It's, it's family. So family and business, it, it never ends. It's always, um, you know, it's family, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, we living it out on Love & Hip Hop Miami. So y'all can tune in every night, 9 p.m. Eastern, and y'all can kind of see how we're dealing with the issues with our dad and, and our brotherhood and everything else. Speaking of, speaking of management, you know, we brought on Brooke Payne um, and Eddie uh, Powell is management for us, and I mean they've been doing an incredible job. And Brooke Payne, I know y'all know him from New Edition. Absolutely. So, yeah, man, it's, it's a big deal. We in Atlanta too. Speaking of management, management, shout out the QC Quality Control. Mm. You know, I did the um, number one record on the City Girls album, so I just want to give a shout out to Quality Control, man. I'm, I, I did the production on that record. Yeah, no, no, big, QC. Big so now, like, going back to the Brooke Payne situation for a second, like you know, like. One of the most notable names in the music game. Like, Huge. I mean, is he like super duper, like, you know, like, you know, cracking down on y'all, like, get, make sure y'all get the moves right? Yeah, moves. he had his foot on our neck out the door just now. Just like, now. You know, this is what we got to do. <laughs> <laughs> was, was that impersonation accurate? <laughs> Not a guess. Hey, yeah, man. it's all it's all love though because I, I feel like you're as strong as your weakest link and everybody's strong links right now. So mm-hmm. we gotta make sure, you know, we keep those quality people, you know, around us and, and, and push us to our maximum potential. Got you. Now, love and hip hop, it exposes sometimes too much about people's lives, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't know what they're gonna chop, what they're gonna edit, how things are gonna like make everything look. Right. Mm-hmm. Have y'all been happy with your portrayal on Love and Hip Hop so far? He said portrayal. Betrayal? <laughs> no, not betrayal, portrayal. Oh, okay. Because oh. edits can portray you to be a certain way. I've seen you situations know, you know where the they'll thing? take a reaction to to another environment or another scenario hey, and spike it in. I've been the victim of that. I, you know, but to be quite honest, that's what you sign up for. So mm. I had to get to the point where I really don't care anymore. I don't even like I don't care. And with love and hip hop, like they'll film the scene. And they'll film us, and everything is real. It's, mm-hmm. it's not like it's a um, reality show where it's scripted or nothing like that. They put us in the room together, and it's, and it's actual reality. But at the reunion, they'll allow you another opportunity to, to speak on the scene. So if something did get edited out, you have one more chance to kind of voice whatever happened again and talk about it again. So it's a cool system, man. Shout out to Mona Scott, Marty Common, Stephanie Gale, um, B. Jones, you know, the whole team, Vivian Gomez over there at um, Loving Hip Hop in the VH1 Thomas. franchise, Sheena Thomas, and the whole entire team, man, that really helped um, put Pretty Ricky on a platform to show the whole world that we're back together again, man. They really they really helped to expose the group um, and everything that we got going on. Now, if you could import somebody from another Loving Hip Hop franchise and have them be on Miami with y'all, who would you import? On Love and Hip Hop Miami? Yeah. I like Stevie J. Ball Grease. Oh, you say from what? This city? From any from any other city. Any other Love and Hip Hop city. I like Stevie J. He, he cracked. I like yeah. Jim Jones. That that was my favorite. I already did. I, I imported Shay from Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Both. Oh, y'all like, y'all, is that still a thing? <laughs> nah, it's not, but I'm just He's saying. saying. Okay. It literally happened already. Yeah. Check mark. <laughs> right. Check, check. I gotta have a wish list. <laughs> Man. Done. So, like, what have y'all not done as a group that y'all want to do and, and, and pull off? Like, far as, like, you know, a bucket list, you know, as it relates to the business. As a group? Yeah. I or individually or as a group. everything, honestly. Because uh, once you get the like money, we, most we, we ain't jump out of the airplane yet, though. I think, I think, we, I think to perform at the BT Awards, that'll be oh, a yeah, dope fact. I mean, we, we performed at the AMAs. And things like that. Billboard Awards. Billboard Awards. We we did things like that, but we never got the respect from 
you know, from our well, own we, people. We always been underrated, though, honestly. We always been we an underdog, gave, but yeah. proved numbers. Like, yeah. they didn't like us at first because of this, but because their daughter was bumping us and things like that. Platinum, you know, every time we came out, we did Platinum, numbers. selling millions, and number one Yeah, records. we always been like like the underdogs, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's so why, we never most, got our just do. Most we, people we gotta ne- go in reverse, because most people usually get on the BT Awards first, and then like, yo, why the AMA's fronting on us? But y'all kind of work. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah, like we, 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 we broke mainstream. barriers, and, and the, thing, yeah. the thing about it is it wasn't no social media out there, so we had to go touch, we had to literally kiss a million people, touch a million hands, you know what I mean, to sell a million records, like four flights in a day. You know what I'm saying? Going city to city from the ground up. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So yeah, I I, I just feel like we never got our just do. Yeah, yeah, performing at some award shows, list. presenting at some award shows, getting some awards. Yeah. <laughs> we got yeah. played on every award. Every award. Some of the greatest don't have a Grammy or a trophy sitting yeah. on their mantle. I really and don't care about all that. Tell you the validation truth. comes from the fans. The fact that people are willing to show up and watch you guys rock in yeah. 2019 yeah, and y'all selling saying. out. like F- Facts. Right. That's exactly. Selling but out. that's like a yeah. sleeping giant. And I, I would always tell people, like, when we do a show, even, even outside of this tour, we sell out. We sell out venues that every single that show. The artists that you know, like the new artists, they some of them can't even do do that. But yep. we can do that, and they still don't. They, they still don't give us the the respect, you know, and recognition yep. that we we deserve. Man, every show that we do is sold out. If you're trying to book Pretty Ricky, you can email bookings at prettyricky.com. That's bookings at prettyricky.com. Serious inquiries only. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I got a birthday party this weekend. <laughs> and that's <laughs> when we decide to do shows, because sometimes we just be like, yeah, you know, but now everything is on the up and up. It's like we working again. But whenever we decide to come together, it's always been, you know, a big thing. It's always been magical. It's, it, it, like, come on, man. <laughs> and real talk, we the, yeah. the, the tour is kind of locked in for the next few months, so we don't really have the, the time for more bookings, but we can do some after parties. So you can hit us, bookings at prettyricky.com. That alone is... Better than a trophy. Like, you know, there's some people who are like begging yeah, but, to be booked. But, but like, at the same time, still like the respect got to be there, right? It's even, even though we are doing sold out shows, it's like, you know, where's the respect at? You know, where, where, what are the awards? Well, you lay you on likes and, and, and things like that and it's, or followers or something like that. I don't know, man. It's crazy, bro. But yeah. if you think about the culture, man, the respect is in the culture, bro. Like, we really transition music from being a, a pre- predominantly rap. Do oriented culture to rapping R and B, and we switched it. You know what I'm saying? When we came out, we broke those barriers. They didn't even know how to categorize the music. They didn't know what time slots to put us in. We created right. that lane for artists to be able to rap and sing on the record. We was the first ones to do it. You know, for our generation at least. You know what I'm saying? From from this millennial nah, generation, take that. every 100%. song, every song, rap and sing, we we created that. Well, you know what? Because you guys are here and you feel like you haven't got, you just do. Mm. We're going to do the first annual Ricky Smiley Morning Show R&B Awards. <laughs> and uh, there are three categories in which you guys have won awards for. Let me tell you about the first song below. And the winner for R&B group most likely to beat up a rap group. They <laughs> sound <laughs> pretty Ricky. <laughs> okay. Hey. Speech. Hey, hey, hey. Speak. 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 Uh, but hold on, there's another word. Uh, there's another award here. Turn up the envelope. And for the R&B group whose songs have been stripped to the most, ladies and gentlemen, Pretty Ricky! <laughs> <laughs> Strip yeah, Lord of Royce. Woohoo! And the award for... Okay. The R&B group that most high school... Women have been hunched too. <laughs> Pretty Ricky. Oh my God. I mean, y'all got three awards. I'm going to pull it up on a 3D printer and I'm going to get it shellacked for y'all. Appreciate it. I, appreciate it. Y'all. I, I need a fish you stamp. I need a fish you stamp. Nah, but like the thing is, like, long as the people still rock with y'all and your name continue to resonate in those right. walls, man, like I said, the awards don't mean nothing, man. Like, yeah, you got it. You got it. You got it. You, you definitely right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You're right. You right. They still rocking with us. They come into the Millennium Tour and that's all we should be carrying. Right. Oh, focusing on anything. And they're showing up in the Apple Store grinding to a pretty Ricky record called Love Like Honey for the Apple Store Challenge. 
You were like Crazy. the Don King of record promotion. Like, <laughs> it's pretty great. All right, so two things I want to hit up before we go. So Millennial Tour, a lot of heavy hitters on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw something going back and forth with uh, you and Sammy Pleasure P. He felt like he was like slighted because he was left off the tour. Like, was it a hard no, you can't be on the tour? No, like it had nothing to do with us. And for him to say that, it was like kind of crazy because like he knows it's all love and we family. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's up to the promoter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, we didn't handpick, you know what I mean, or whatever, so, yeah. And we but. couldn't put everybody on the tour because there's a lot of people from, from our era that deserve to be on it. Bow Wow, Sierra, uh, Sammy. It's a, it's a lot of us, man, that... that, that this ain't stopping right now. Yeah, this is I, just the beginning. This could be like the movie Expendables, where, like, you know, you do your first lap, you know, for 2019. 2020, you go back and get those people who didn't make it the first lap. Like, you know, groups like right. Ideal. Yeah, or um, Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy deserved to be on here. Yeah, yeah, oh, my ends. Yeah. Yeah, man, I mean, there's so many. Right? You know, this, this ain't the only opportunity <laughs> for people to get on board and for y'all to do this, man. I'm sure this right. thing is going to be. Yeah, but that's the big. thing. I, I feel like our generation was kind of, like, overlooked, and it's like, now they just not coming back to be like, oh, wait, you know what I mean? Everybody been a diamond in the rough from that, you know, from that era. So, you know, I think now that they seeing more artists like us touring together, that now that, that creates the opportunity for more, you know, more acts to get together and tour together. We can be touring all year long if people just get together and then y'all switch out from this tour, you know, just keep... Switching is going to be entertainment forever. People always like to go out and have a good time and see a good show, and you know what I'm saying? Now, what's your breaking point as far as, like, you know, because, like, some people don't handle being on the road well. Like, the first week is fun. Second week, ah, you know, you're kind of catching your stride. Third week. Well, we came into the business as a touring act. We okay. we started out, we had our own tour. The um Even even the Blue Stars, we came, we, we toured on the Scream Tour. First, the Scream Tour 4 and 5. Then Late Night Special, we did the Late Night Special Tour. We did 73 cities straight. Mm -hmm. So, and then even when we first got signed, we went city to city in a tour bus doing promo shows for the radio station. Then we caught flights to go and do, like, the winter balls at the end of the year. So we used to being on the road. We're ready. This is what we do. Um, occasionally, we might want to go home and spend time with our families, maybe, you know, one or two days out of the week. But mm -hmm. for the most part, man, we're doing this for the fans. We want to give them what they've been looking for and asking for for the last 10 years, and that's pretty Ricky reunited on stage, B2K reunited on stage. You know how many DMs and Instagram messages that we had to send to B2K, be like, man, if we worked it out, y'all could work it out. Like, we was on it, like, trying to be supportive of the reuniting movement, man. Day 26, too, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. all of us support each other, all the groups, man, that really been through the bad management era and all that. <laughs> Yo, bad management will kill a group. Because it, it, it's tough because, like, you know, like, it's one thing when you're a solo artist, all the money's funneling one guy. Like, mm. y'all got to work, like, eight times as hard, you know, when there's more than two people yeah. in a group, more than three people in a group, when there's four people in a group, and then you got background dancers, entourage, mm. God forbid you have a live band. Like, you know, there's a lot of people. And we got all paid. those. Oh, man. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. Man, you got to plan that second ride of that tour already, man, just to make <laughs> but, sure the money keeps flowing. But being in a group, is it makes it easier sometimes too because a solo artist got to do everything by itself true like right now slicks not even saying nothing but we kind of like talking you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and then he gonna chime in in like five minutes <laughs> and say something funny i'm waiting for it and pleasure p like you know being solo and being back with the group is it comfortable like you know like you know sometimes there's like a comfortability that knows like yo i don't have to work as hard because my team work as hard as i do so um, it doesn't I, fall all on your shoulders like when you was out there by yourself. Well, solo is good in the sense because, you know, it, a group is different personalities. So just what, which day, who, who's going through what. Me, I can bet on myself. You know what I'm saying? I know that I'm going to show up to work on time. I know that I can, you know what I'm saying, do what I need to do. But as far as, like, the days when you're, like, tired, like, you know what I'm saying, it's always a good thing, too. So Yeah. Team. Well, team, before team. we go, man, and, I wanna, and okay, before you, you do it. the outro. Go, do your thing. This this baby blue whoa talking. Follow me on Instagram, baby blue whoa with four A's on it. Or you can follow Blue Hefner. That's but that's but alias. Okay, Blue Hefner. Follow me, baby blue whoa. Hey, I want to say this too. So if anybody really serious about starting a dream business and you need help, you know, actually getting a. Uh, actionable steps to your goals on hitting seven figures or hitting six figures and 
living out your dream. I got an entrepreneur MBA program where you guys can really learn the things you need to learn, right? Without going broke in the school system and got to pay them back all the money because you're supposed to make extra money. That's why you're going to school, right? Mm. But I'm changing that. So you guys can really go to my Instagram, I am spectacular, and click the link in my bio and uh, and really register for my live training. And uh, we'll take it from there. P? Now, I ain't got nothing to say, man. Just make sure y'all come to the Millennium Tour. And I'm, um, yeah. Cool. Thank y'all for selling us an opportunity instead of vodka. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's something we actually can do something with. A lot yeah. of people just want to get you drunk. The Ricky Smiley Morning Show.